I'm Colonel Lewis Zaki, and I'm going to share with you a lot of information you don't have about why dice are what they are and do what they do, and why most of the dice that are being used today are unfit for the purpose they have been purchased. I'd like to start out by showing you this photograph, and you can see that the first stack is obviously taller than the second stack. And how this dice stack was made is I took 10 dice out of Red Box Dungeons and Dragons and I stacked them on top of each other. Then I took 10 more dice out of Red Box Dungeons and Dragons and I stacked them on top of each other. And you can see that the first stack is obviously taller than the second stack. But what you don't know is the reason the first stack is taller is because I stacked all the dice in the first stack with the number one facing the number 20, while all the dice in the second stack were stacked with the number nine facing the number 12. And why I used those digits is because I took a micrometer and I measured, and I discovered that these dice were 15 thousandths of an inch larger from one side to the other and the, then the uh, uh, dice in the second stack. Consequently, uh, there's no way that I could sit here with a micrometer and impress you with 15 thousandths of an inch, but when you look at the two stacks, you can see there is a significant difference. And then the next two stacks of dice, and every two stacks of dice, are from other people who make games, uh, polyhedra dice in the gaming field. Now, <clears throat> what I want you to understand is that when a dice has a differential in dimensions like this, it's going to have the tendency to stop on its lowest center of gravity. Just like you take an egg out of a carton, it doesn't sit upright when you stand it on the table. It rolls over on its side. If this was a dice, I'm sure most of you would agree with me that if you threw this to see what's going to happen, most often it's going to come up on its flattest sides and the next most likely outcome will be on these edges here and the least most likely outcome will be on these edges here which is what you've got with the 1 and the 20 and so the people who have these rounded edge dice have been saying to themselves gee it's been a long time since I've seen a 20 and then they think oh no it's probably just my imagination but in point of fact, it's the truth. And so they're killing off characters that deserve to live prematurely because they can't roll the saving numbers that are required. Now, a lot of people don't realize that when dice are molded, they come off of a casting sprue like this. They forget about all of the model airplanes and model tanks and model cars out of plastic that they made and how they had to break off the part that they wanted from the casting sprue. But there's no way that the plastic can get into the part you want if it doesn't flow through a casting sprue. And what's going on is all the people who make those dice are using the same approach as, as I to get the dice in the first case. But after they have clipped their dice off of the casting runner, they have to take a step to remove the casting blemish because if they don't, when they put paint on it, the paint's going to lodge in that blemish and look awful. So what happens is they put the dice in a rock polisher and they tumble it to remove the casting mark. Then they take the dice out and put them in a french fry basket and immerse the french fry basket into the bottom of a paint bucket. And when the dice come out, they're now all the same color everywhere. After the dice have had time to let the paint dry, those dice are then put back into a rock polisher and a very coarse medium has been put into the rock polisher which will abrade the faces and polish off the unwanted exterior paint. And since this medium is so rough it can't get down into the digits to take out that paint, so when they're finished with this step, the dice now have good contrasting colors in every digit. However, the dice also look awful because they're all scratched up. 
so the dice have to go back into the rock polisher for a third tumbling and when they do this is a very fine medium that will polish off all of the scratch marks and blemishes and in the end they wind up with a die that looks fairly decent. So what I want to do is make you aware of the fact that all of my dice are never put in a rock polisher. And as a result of that, every one of my dice has a little bitty blemish where it's been clipped from the casting runner. And a lot of people come to me and say, why are you sitting up nights and deliberately defacing these dice so that nobody can get a perfect one? And that's not what's going on at all. I sit up nights and I work on these dice to ink the digits myself by hand. And that's why the edges on my dice are exactly and precisely where they should be. Game Science makes precision dice. And you can see the little clip mark here below the number seven. So I'm sorry about the fact that there's this bl blemish, but I don't have the, a technological approach that would allow me to throw hundreds of dice into something and get that removed. And as a result of what I do, my dice have more fire and luster and sheen and brilliance than the dice of the people with whom I'm in competition because their dice are all dull from having been tumbled in that rock polisher and polished again and again and again. Now their dice have lost their edges and in the beginning TSR used to bring in dice from Taiwan and they used the cheapest plastic possible which is why, after only limited use, you could see all the edges on their dice are changing colors. And that's a sign of the wear. And I've had players tell me I rolled a 12-sided dice and it turned into powder after I had it for nine months. So this is not good plastic to make a dice from in the first place. It's cheap. And when you have a cheap product, then you can make more money as you sell it for an escalated price. Now I want to bring to your attention a number of additional problems with these dice. And these are things that very few people who don't make dice know. As you look at these dice, you can see that this dice has missing a hook and missing its base on the 20. The zero has two breaks in it whereas the dice next to it is only missing the hook and a break in the top of the 20. This dice has got a break in the 20 and the, in the, and the zeros, but the dice next to it is absolutely perfect. If the mold was causing these problems, the mold would turn out the same unit time after time after time. So if the mold was generating this shape, then it never could have made a perfect 20. And because there's a perfect 20 over here, what we know is that the reason these digits are missing information is because they were tumbled more than they needed to be tumbled. But beyond that, do you see that there's a line under the number 20 and there's a line under the number 11? That's because every dice that they have made has a line under every one of the digits. And the unskilled worker is told to go to the tumbling device and reach in and pull out a handful of dice. And if he doesn't see any lines on under the numbers, then he can turn those dice loose and sell them. But if it's got lines under it, then it needs more tumbling. And what happened was, this dice had the unfortunate bad fortune to be in with dice that needed more tumbling, even though this one didn't need more tumbling, and consequently, the polishing on this edge removed the hook, the polishing on this edge removed the break in the zero and caused the deletion of the bottom of the two, and the polishing on this edge over here removed the top part of that zero. And what it is, is if you could measure, you would discover that this face is physically smaller than that face, because that face didn't endure as much polishing. Consequently, this dice is going to roll differently than that dice, and furthermore, every one of these edges has a unique radius. No two edges have the same radius because there's no way as these dice tumble inside the machine that you can control how much material you're taking off of those edges. 
That means these dice are going to roll in a very predictable way, repeatedly. And it's unfortunate because when people buy dice, they think the dice are going to generate random numbers. And they're not getting their money's worth with dice that are built that way. Now, I have here some dice that were made by Chessex. And one of the interesting things about the Chessex dice is when you open it up, you can see the two different colors of material that were used to make the dice. And they used the rock polishing method to produce the shapes that they are selling to people. And a recent test of these dice has proven that, generally speaking, they're heavy on the 1 or the 20 side. If you take six tablespoons of Epsom salts and put them in a cup of uh, eight, in six ounces of hot water, six ounces of boiling hot water, and you dissolve the Epsom salts, and then you take that mixture and put it in the refrigerator, when you take that out of the refrigerator the next day, you're going to discover that the Chessex dice will float with the heavy side always down and almost all of them have a heavy side. We, 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 what we don't know at this juncture, because we had not had enough time to check it out, is what does that mean in the performance of the dice? Up to this moment, I thought that the reason the heavy side stayed is that the dice would roll on the shortest axis, and I don't know what impact being different in weight has on the dice's ability to generate random numbers. So, at this time, I, uh, oh, I, okay, I want to tell you some more. There used to be a company called the Armory, and they made a 30-sided dice. And when you look at this 30-sided dice, you can see that there are very small blemishes where the dice was clipped off the casting runner. And the people who were buying this dice did the same thing to the armory that they were doing to me. Jesus, look at that blemish there. What the hell's the matter with you? Why can't you make a perfect dice? What kind of trash are you foisting off on us? You need to make these dice better. Why don't you get off your duff and do what a decent dice maker does like the Chessex and all these other people? Why can't you make dice? And so they go on and on and on about what's wrong with these dice. So the armory did a very inventive thing. They paid $60,000 to make a whole new series of molds. And as you look at these molds, you can see that there is no clip mark on those molds. And a lot of people gripe and groan over the fact that there's now a dip mark on every face and the dice are no longer flat on those faces. But wait, come closer and look deeper into these dice and you'll see that there's a dot in the center of every zero. And that's called the gate. And what the clever part was, instead of injecting the plastic from the side of the dice as I was doing, they injected it through the zero on their 30. And when the mold was as crammed full of hot molten plastic as it could get, it, the gate closed. Now, you remember from basic science, heat expands and cold contracts. Well, if you open that mold right away, all that molten plastic is going to run out. If you leave it sit there for 15 seconds, you're going to get jello running out, okay? You have to leave it sit and cure to get solid. And once it's solid, then you can open up the mold. But you remember heat expands and cold contracts. And so what's happening is these dice cool, they get what's called heat sink, and there's no way out of that. So you can't open up the gate and squirt more plastic in. You got what you got, and that's... The, the unfortunate result of trying to please everybody about getting rid of the clip marks. Now, I have here some dice that were used by Frederick Meyer, and he gave them to me because he said, I bought all three dice on the same day. And these two dice were from TSR, and this dice was from Game Science. I rolled all three dice for six months, at the end of which time I felt that the two I got from TSR were unreliable, so I put them on a windowsill and continued using the game science dice for another two years. And as you can see, 
my dice looks better after two years of use than their dice looks after only six months of use. Now at this time, I need the assistance of a pretty stranger, and you look pretty strange to me, sir, so would you please come on over here and give me a, hel a helping hand. Sure. I have here two of TSR's dice, and what I want you to do is to stack one on top of the other and try to align the triangles of each so that they all they both face in the same direction. Does it matter the number at all? No, the numberings don't don't, don't matter. Okay. But as you do that, right, do you find that the dice are stable and they're and they're doing just what they're supposed to do, or can you see gaps around the edges and the dice seems like it wants to wobble? Yeah, I mean there's you can see there's a little bit of, of a gap there, like at the yeah. edge there. Okay. Now, I want you to take two of my dice and do the same thing. Stack them so that the triangles match the triangles. And do you see a gap around the edges? Yeah, no, that's uh, pretty flat on. All right, and every face on my dice is flat, so it helps with the dice being capable of uni uh, giving up a uniform amount of energy. Now, I'm going to show what's going on here because a lot of people don't think dice with edges are any good but you have to remember that if you go to a gambling casino you will find dice that have sharp crisp edges and it's required by federal law that they do and cheats who want to take unfair advantage of somebody will trim one one thousandth of an inch off of every edge in order to make sure that that particular edge will somehow influence the ability of the dice to come up differently every time they throw it. And they don't work for a living. <laughs> they just roll dice and cheat people out of money. So the sharp, crisp edge is going to do a uniform job of absorbing a certain amount of energy with each contact on the table, whereas the rounded edge dice doesn't do that. I have here two game science dice with sharp crisp edges and two TSR dice with rounded edges. And I'm going to throw all four dice at the same time with a uniform amount of energy on each of the dice. And as you can see, the game science dice halt, but the dice from TSR gallivant on across the table. And a lot of people who don't know any different say, Oh, I like the dice that take a long time to stop, yeah! Well, I salute those people as the greatest uh, ga game players in the country because they're willing to pit their good skill against a pair of rotten dice and try to surmount the fact that they're screwing themselves every time they roll something that can't give them saving numbers. So, a lot of people have complained about the fact that my dice cost more than dice from other sources. But they don't want to pay attention to the fact that fresh oats cost more than used oats, even though the used oats have only passed through the horse one time. Now, my competitors are selling their dice for a smaller amount of money because they know what their dice are worth. So if you want worthless dice, you can go to any one of my competitors and get them. And I want to thank you for your time, and I hope that you have learned something about why dice are made the way they are made and why they perform the way they perform. Thank you.